I hope uh, you guys are having a great Friday. Uh, for those of you guys uh, that are able to tune in late this morning, I'm gonna be going over a couple of techniques with acrylic, finishing off the week um, on the overlay. I find it very, very important. I've talked about it earlier in the week. It's one of the most important techniques that you have to master when it actually comes to doing nails. It was something that I addressed this morning um, with a lot of the new students. I want to be able to show you guys how you're going to be applying it when you're actually doing any type of design work. So let's get right to it. All right, so what we're going to end up doing is just getting this nail prepared and ready for application. So you're going to go through the motions, even though it is a fake hand, right? You want to be able to prepare the surface, right? So we're going to pretend that we're pushing the cuticles back. And then at a low speed, 3000 RPMs, which is my electric file, I'm gonna go ahead and remove shine around the surface. So I just wanna be able to gently tickle away, right? All the way through, all the way, right? Very, very gentle, I'm not being aggressive, but we wanna be able to feather away the shine from the surface of the nail. This is going to set us up uh, to swipe away any dust, oils, and contaminants from the surface. And then once we are done doing that, then we're going to protein bond the surface. All right, so I'm just going to wipe that off just to make sure it's dry. We're going to use protein bond all the way through. All right, so once we are done protein bonding the surface, on all 10 nails, we want to come back with a second coat, right? So two coats all the way through, that's going to set you up for success. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, use some forms and I wanna make sure that um, all of you guys know that when you're placing the tab underneath, it's gonna give you support through here. Uh, we're gonna build a um, it's darn fly, it's crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and build um, a little bit longer length than normal. So I, and, and I'm gonna go a little bit more of a tapered square nail. So I'm gonna kind of keep that open. And then that way, when I get this underneath the free edge, I have kind of a flat surface all the way through. Again, a little bit tapered square, but if I'm going with more of a square shape, then I, I definitely want to kind of taper that end down, open it so that I have a wide surface to work off of. Um, if we are working with any type of glitters, um, what you can do is you could build it on the nail. I'm going to be working with a glitter from an old collection that we used to have, which was Block Party. And I'm going to build my tip, right? So I have my brush. I'm going to get a nice bead and what I want to be able to do is just kind of drain this and then when I set this to the surface, right, my whole focus is, again, trying to get this flush to the natural nail, right, so I'm going to, again, use the body of the brush to walk this up to the corner and then I can use the edge, you notice I'm, I'm really keeping it. My, my, my guides are going to be my growth channels right here. That's where my guides are. I need to keep it within those channels. I don't wanna to go too wide. That way, whatever nail I decide to build, it's going to be great. So we can go as long as, now we could bring it all the way down to the edge of the nail form, right? For those of you guys that like building really, really long nails all the way down to the end. Right, so whatever glitter mix that you make, you can go ahead and do this. So this is a, a really great way to establish um, a, a tip. And not only that, but you can see from the side that I'm building something really, really flat uh, to the nail. Okay, so 
we're going to add some some definite element to it and what i want to be able to do is let me go ahead and sprinkle some of I just spilled it all over the place but you can see that i'm going to be using some mylar right some mylar pieces um, this is already set so i'm not going to be able to kind of push it into this surface if i take a little bit and i just kind of smear it on wet then what i can start to do is just kind of push it into the wet the wet areas this is not going to stick right i'm just trying to get this into the wet area um, or you can decide that you can use a little bit of clear powder but what i'm doing is just taking a little bit of the existing glitter and i just kind of want to create a fade Right, so if I'm using it right at the line, and then I can use this to kind of create a natural ombre. I'm using the tip just to kind of feather it right here so that it looks like from the tip, I'm actually ombreing it into the body of the nail. You can see that. So if you wanted to stick some mylar down, I can just take a little bit of clear powder while it's wet. And then again, you can use this just to take kind of mylar pieces and get it through all the way around the edges, then it'll start to dry, right? So kind of all the way through the middle, but you can see from the side profile, again, it's going to be quite, quite thin. Um, anything, you, you can put confetti, you can put all kinds of, of different things. Um, if you decide that you want to continue working a little bit, uh, of embellishments all the way through, you can take wet, clear and then continue working some of the pieces all the way down right small pieces that's going to stick uh, to the surface and, and that's what you want to be able to do it doesn't matter if it's going to be sticking up because you're going to be capping it and filing it all the way through okay so once we actually have enough pieces then i'm going to be focusing my attention on capping it one of the things i'll do from this point after i'm done building this nail you can move on to the second finger and then when this dries if you wanted to pinch in a wicked c curve while the free edge is moldable you'd be able to do that right so i can come in i can actually shape this the c curve tight uh, but right now i'm just going to go right into um, and a, a clear overlay. So we have to remember that when we're looking at the side profile, I have a lot of, I have a lot of volume that I have to work with because of the length of the nail. So my upper arch, even though you can see the length, right, is all the way down to the very edge of the form, right, all the way down here. Okay, but you can see my sidewall, how it lines up absolutely perfectly. If I line this up to the side, you can see how straight it is to my lower arch. Right, so I need to be able to drop a bead. I need a pretty big upper arch right around, I'd say about that area here, right, to be able to handle the length of this nail. So let's go ahead and get a big bead. I'm going to get a large bead of clear. I'm going to bounce, 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 bounce. And then what we're going to do is give it a few seconds. And I'm going to set this down right here and immediately use the tip of the brush to walk behind. As the sides start to come down, you can see how I'm like literally if I brush the sides, one of the things I'll do is I'll just kind of guide it. Right. And but I don't I don't. I don't brush it from the surface. I'll brush the sides tight. And then what it'll do is it'll just kind of round off, right? So as I start brushing from the front, you can see that the bulk, right? If I have to adjust this, you can see how I can lightly use the body of the brush just to kind of fill that space in. Okay. So you know, as everything was kind of running down to the sides here, if I brush the sides down, then I'm going to get a really, really nice round shape. I don't have to really touch that back end. Everything will kind of go into place right there. Okay. So you can see from the side how I'm starting to work that out to try to keep this built up. So I have to fill the rest of it. I have to fill from here to here. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do again is take a nice bead. I'll go ahead and get another bead about almost about the same size. And I'm going to set this here and then let it run down. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to kind of guide it. I'm not going to brush it. I'm just going to kind of guide it down, right? So that way I don't have any bubbles at all. I'm going to have this like totally crystal clear. And that's what we want to be able to do. So once it gets down to this point, then I can start to use the body of the brush, right? To kind of fill that space. And then if I had to brush slightly back, I would be able to do that just to make sure that we fill out all the space. The nice thing about the, the speed clear is I'll be able to just kind of use the body and shape it over um, any of the area that was actually missing product at all. But even from the sides, as I start to come down the sides, I try, try to start to blend it in. I might need a hair, I don't know if you guys can see, but I think I need a hair of product right here. I, I was missing. So what I'll do is I'll just apply it, right? And I'll let it sit and then I'll just kind of brush it from the surface. I'll leave that thickness right there. I'll just kind of hold it in place. I'm not gonna just start brushing it aggressively. And then as I start to pat down and then pull through, but it fills in perfect. Give it a chance to sit, to dry, right? And then, look, man, it's like it's all, it's all there. I, I don't like everything is filled in. Everything is well built. I, 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 I can build the nail without having to overbuild it or make it too thick. It's going to be a lot easier for you to. Um, Again, start from the very, very corner. If you build out an area and you notice that it's like, like I can notice here, right? If I look back here, ignore the plastic. It cracked when I pushed it in, but you can see how it comes down, 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 down here, right? So you can see it, this is a little bit wider than that area, right? So normally for me, I need to make sure that I don't, I have to kind of fill this area. You don't see that this area you can see. So I'm just going to do a touch of acrylic and I'm literally just going to bring it over the surface. Boom. All right. And then just lightly, lightly touch it, lightly touch it. And look at that. You see how that kind of fills in that gap. It wasn't a gap where the natural nail was. It was a, a little divot right there on that back end. And so as it starts to set and I start to brush it out, this is going to allow me now when I file it to file it perfect, but you can see how I fill that space. Those minuscule, minuscule details are going to make all the difference when it actually comes to, to, to shaping. Okay. So completely just like it's all over the place. So what I'm going to do is put everything away. I'm going to keep my brush inside my dish just to make sure that it's clean. I'm gonna put my clear away. Go ahead and put my glitter away. Uh, my mylar, I, I spilled it, so it is what it is. I'll clean everything up, okay? And then we'll go ahead and get ready for, uh, for filing, okay? The difference between this room and my classroom next door is huge. It's 75 degrees in here. My classroom was like, in the really low 60s. So this is starting to set. I'm just um, allowing this, this to dry. Um, for those of you guys that have acrylic jammed up inside your, your brush, if you let the brush sit inside your dish, then um, what we're going to do is I'm going to work it all out just like this and then uh, one of the things you can do is with the dirty monomer that you have inside here, right? The used monomer that you're going to have to chuck. I'm just going to put a little bit, just going to put through a little bit of acetone inside there. All right. This is going to act like my brush cleaner. Okay. So I have, uh, literally 50, 50 
I'm going to go ahead and keep this in here. I'm just going to swivel this in. If I let it sit, if there's any acrylic that's jammed up inside the brush, this is going to act as a really, really good brush cleaner. But what I'm actually able to do is I'll clean out my brush just to make sure that there's no residue that's going to build in that way. Uh, next week when I do my demos, I know that I'm gonna, my brush is going to be nice and clean. All right. Let's get back to this. This is really starting to set. That foundation is really starting to mold. I can go ahead and kind of, I know that I can kind of pinch this into shape, but the, the form is, is done. All right, making sure that it is depending on the length. And for those of you guys that are working in the next week, nationwide is going to be freezing cold, so. One of the things you can do is just get a uh, heating pad. For those of you guys that are working with acrylic, you can get a heating pad. You can rest your your, uh, your powders on top of the heating pad. It'll kind of warm them up. And then you can run your liquid bottle under really hot liquid water. It'll warm up the bottle. Uh, get your monomer slightly warm so that if you're working in freezing temperatures, um, definitely this is going to help. Okay, so watch. So same thing. Going to make sure that we file our sides really, really even. I need to make sure that my front end is completely straight. I'm going to turn the hand to the side. We need to make sure that my lower arch, so the low point is right there, right? The low point is right there. So I need to file up, up until my file ends up becoming perfect. So if I start from my low point, and I file up until my hand file reaches the side, then I'm going to be able to file it perfect. You can see the opposite side. So I need to turn the hand. If I turn the hand to the side and I start from the lowest point and I file up, file up until my hand file reaches, right? So that, that's the whole purpose is trying to get it so that it's completely even. Trying to keep this as large as I can so that you guys can see. Sorry if it's off screen slightly, but you can see how nice and straight my lower arches are going to be. Once I have that straightened out, then what we can do is we can file the rest of it in with my electric file. I'm going to go ahead and get this, I have to bring my bit out. And the reason why is that um, uh, because of the length of the nail, like I have to make sure that the hand piece, right, you can see how the barrel, the, the nose of the hand piece doesn't touch it. It will touch it when I get to there, but that's fine because I can just adjust. So if I go to about 10,000 RPMs, I'm just gonna touch gonna touch, 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 and then here in the front. So I have, you can see how my shape, my side profile, if I'm looking down the barrel of the nail, I want to be able to pull in one direction here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull in one direction. That way I can get a really, really nice curve all the way through. I'm gonna lower the speed to about 8,000 when I'm going around the cuticle area, but you're going to notice as I work around the cuticle area, I'm just taking down bulk and then all the way through. So this, this nail is as long as the nail form. Once I've reduced bulk from the surface of the nail, then it's a matter of taking your hand file. We're gonna get the cuticle area as, as tight as we can, but you notice again, let me just kind of zoom out. I have my hand, my hand file like this. I'm going to come down in one direction on this side, just to make sure that this side is even. Contact, contact, contact going up, let it fall down all the way through. Once we've got the shape that we want, Last thing I'm going to look at is I need to make sure that we're looking at it from this profile here so I, I can straighten up this, boom, make this really, really sharp from client perspective, I like it. And then look down again, down the barrel of the nail, 
And then I can literally, I, you, I can make a peace sign. I rest it in between my knuckles, my right here, so that I can literally work it from side to side. <clears throat> and once we dust this off, right, it's, it's going to be ready for some, some finished gel. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is really important, but you want to make sure that you kind of, if you have space around the cuticle area and you want to make sure that your gel top coat doesn't chip, you're going to put a little bit of, 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 of protein bond around the edges. And then you're going to notice that when I actually set my gel top coat in, it's going to anchor onto that area really, really well. This is finish. This is the no tack sealer. We're going to put all the way through. And voila, that's how we're going to build out. All right, the overlay is really important, you guys, because that's going to determine whether you're going to be able to build structures like this. Cool. Wanted to finish it off with a bang this week to show you guys what you're going to be able to do. Um, again, for those of you guys that participated in my class this morning, the class on Monday, get a hold of Ray Bracamontes. He's going to be able to get you guys all dialed in so that if you guys want to perfect your work, I'm going to help you get there. Thank you for tuning in. I love you guys much. Hope you guys have a safe weekend. I will see you next week. Peace. Peace.